Well, the Mets announced that they're going to be retiring your number, number 18. That Has that actually happened yet or no? Yes, it's June 1st this year. June 1st. Okay, that's what I thought. So even though you've taken your uniform off and left baseball in the rear view, how does it feel to know that your number is being retired by the team that you started with? Well, I, I think it's a really significant moment for me and, you know, the coaches that had an impact on my life, um, for my wife and my kids, um, that I was able to overcome. You know, you could, you could easily sit in the victim mentality about life, but I don't want to sit there because my mother raised me and she raised me right. And I don't ever want to say I'm a victim. I don't want to say I'm an overcomer. And I want to live with that and I want to ride with that. I want to ride off into the sunset of my life, you know, when it's over uh, and said and done that I was an overcomer. I never wanted to sit and say these things held me back because I, I look at life like this, you know, n no one will come here and have a perfect life. So if somebody tell you they do have a perfect life, I would tell you to run and run fast because they lying. <laughs> because there are going to be some trials and tribulations. Um, it didn't never say it would not be some trials and tribulations. It said things will never prosper over you. You know, didn't say it wouldn't form and things will form against you, but they will not prosper over you. And things have formed against my life, but they never prospered over me because I didn't allow them to take over me. Some people end up allowing them to take over them because they, they, they dwell on what everybody else think and say, but I don't reflect on what everybody else say and think. I reflect on where I came from. And I, I know where I came from. And where I came from, I had to, you had to either make a decision to get out of there or you want to stay there. And I don't want to, I, I, it's the same thing in life. You, you make a decision to stay there or you need to get up. So I was able to get up in life and, and become someone new in life. And I think it's just such a great honor that, you know, the Mets have come to that place with the new ownership. Uh, to recognize in my career, the start of my career there in those eight years I played there, and that they would honor me and they would retire my jersey and say, well, no one will ever wear number 18 again for this organization because of what you have done for this organization. You've done so much. You, uh, you had adversities. You went through them and you didn't give up. You know, even during the days of playing in the field, you never quit. You never gave up. And so I want to be able to celebrate that and, and say thank you. You know, so thank you to the fans because had it not been for the fans coming in to cheer you, to boo you, whatever it may be, it's all part of it. I learned to live with it. And it was a great part and it was a great feeling. And so it's one of the highest honors in sports. I think a lot of people don't understand. Everybody don't get their number retired. A lot of guys will go to the Hall of Fame in their different sports, but only certain select will have their number retired where they hang, hang it up in the stadium and say, Nobody's gonna ever put this uniform on again. And I'm getting I'm getting to be that person come June first this year. Yeah, man. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Thank you. Looking forward to it. You've gone through a lot of addiction issues that we've talked about, starting with alcohol, leading to to cocaine, crack, shooting up heroin, doing all various types of pills. But now you're completely sober. And a lot of people who are watching this right now are trying to figure out how to get sober mm -hmm. because the majority of their life has been similar to yours. So to those people who are listening right now, what would you tell them? Cause you've been sober now for 20 something years. Yeah. Over 20 something years. My wife, I think she's got about 23, 24 years. Um, and, and of course it's just one day at a time that a person has to learn how to live, but also you have to remember. And I tell people all this all the time. It's a stigma where people, talk about people in the drug addiction and talk about their weak. There's nothing weak about it. It's an illness. Um, and it's something that craves, you know, the body craves for. And it's not until one can get delivered. You know, you can't deliver yourself. And there's many, I tell people there's many pathways to recovery. You know, a lot of people go to, you know, AA, NA program, stuff like that, and treatment and all that, and all that's well, well and good for people. And they need that. But there's only one way to freedom. And you got to get free inside of yourself. You got to get spiritually unbound, you know, and I had, that's what had to happen to me. I had, I was spiritually bound by the addiction. It had a stronghold on my life. And it wasn't until I came into my relationship with Christ and got free on the inside because the problem lies on the inside with us, the brokenness on the inside of us that never gets healed. And we try to heal it 
for myself. We try to heal it with money. We try to heal it with buying more stuff, clothes and everything else. And that doesn't work. And all that do is put a patch on it like you put a Band-Aid on it. And it's not until you actually go in and have the real surgery on the inside of you where that brokenness lies on the inside of a person and you allow yourself to be healed on the inside from that. And now you will be able to find the freedom and you will have the liberty to enjoy life to the fullness now because you no longer have this broken feeling inside of you about who you are. Now you know who you are. And, and that's what happened to me. I had a complete transformation over my life and I've been in faith for a long time and you know, standing and doing a lot of great things to help a lot of people. And I want to continue to do that till the end of my life. And, you know, I, I, I credit my mother. I say, God's got a great sense of humor. He used two women to straighten me out. My mother praying for me and my wife pulling me out of dope houses <laughs> and leading me back into my faith to get me well. Well, Daryl Strawberry, man, uh, the kind of honesty that you've shown throughout this interview is very rare. And I've interviewed thousands of people. Uh, a lot of people that I interview always try to paint themselves in the best possible light. You know, they don't show all the bruises and dirt and everything else that they went through. But you've really embraced not only your victories, but also your losses along the way. And like you said, every person that you know or you don't know has been through a similar journey in their own way. But not everyone is honest enough to actually talk about it and admit it to themselves. And I think as you live in denial and think that you're you're perfect and whatever issues you have is not really a big deal, you continue to bring pain not only to yourself, but all the people around you. So I really, you know, not only do I appreciate the the triumphs and the World Series and the playoffs and, you know, the the all-star games and everything else like that, but to talk about all the downfalls and how you managed to actually turn yourself around and, and to know that for a third of your life, you've been completely sober. Uh, I think that's very, very inspirational. And I think that really shows a lot of people that you could make a lot of bad decisions for decades and you could turn it around at any point, which is something that you've done. And, and I, I am extremely grateful for the conversation we just had. I've really internalized a lot of the stuff, you know, cause I have my own set of problems as well, you know? And, um, you know, I'm really taking a lot of notes throughout. I really appreciate what you've shared with me today. Well, well, thanks for having me. You know, and like I said before, we, we, we all do. We all are human. And I didn't say, you know, Bible says some of us will fall short. They say we will all fall short. And falling short doesn't mean you can't get back up. That's the problem with so many people. And the problem that has happened to so many celebrities, why they've never been able to get back up, because everybody's always praised them about what they used to do. And then when the storm comes, they don't know how to get out of the storm. You know, and I, no different than any other celebrity, I, I had a lot of storms in my life. And when they came, I just didn't drown in it. Because if you drown and go under in the water, you're, you're done. If you stay above, you don't have to use excuses. And you can clean yourself up regardless of what, what challenges you've had in life. It's just life. And then and, and hopefully... You know, so many more see that. So many didn't have to die in addiction like so many of them that did die in addiction because nobody ever told them they had a problem. And they could, they can get well. That's my whole point here today with you is to show people that you can get well no matter what it may look like because I've been through it all and done it all. Well, yeah, and I feel that you actually got somewhat lucky because during the time that you were going through your drug issues, fentanyl wasn't around. Yeah. And I've, I've personally lost friends, like my friend Gangster Boo from 3-6 Mafia. She died from a fentanyl overdose last year. And I, I had just been hanging out with her a week before. And, and these days, people simply don't get a second chance because of what fentanyl is doing. You don't know what you're getting. You know, you're getting these street drugs and you have no idea. And before you know it, that's it. There's no second chance. You've checked out. And, and, and that's it. So, so you were luckily able to recover before what we're going through right now so you could actually tell the story. And hopefully a lot of people that are listening and millions of people will listen to this. I think they're really going to get a lot of knowledge, a lot of wisdom from what you're saying. So thank you so much. I wish you all the best. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you guys. Yes, sir. Peace.